All right, today we're going over valence tests and reverse valence tests, and we're going to talk about how to perform them, and then some tips and tricks how to remember them and keep them separate in your mind. So to start off with, these are both tests for carpal tunnel syndrome, and they're both looking to see if the median nerve is being compressed in the carpal tunnel and causing some radiating nerve pain into the median distribution of the hand. So how do you perform regular old school original recipe valence test? Have your patient place the dorsums of their hands together, sitting or standing. From there, fingers are pointing down. From there, they raise their wrists up until they reach their maximum wrist flexion. From there, they hold for 60 seconds, and a positive test would be recreation of that median nerve pain, numbness and tingling into the median nerve distribution of the hand, which is the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and the lateral side of the ring finger. So if this is Phalen's test, the original Phalen's test, what's reverse Phalen's test? Well, basically, instead of wrist flexion, we're now in wrist extension. So fingers are pointed up, elbows up, and they slowly lower their wrist until they reach their maximum wrist extension. From there, they hold for 60 seconds, and a positive test, again, would be that median nerve distribution, at least for the palmar side of the hand. Always remember, it's the palmar side of the hand. So that median nerve distribution is the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and the lateral side of the ring finger for the palmar distribution. As you can see from this picture here, this chart, the uh, dorsal, dorsal part of the hand is a little different, all right? So one tip if you're having trouble remembering which finger is being divided by the ulnar nerve and the median nerve, at least for the palmar aspect. So it's the ring finger, and I think of that as it's the marriage finger. It's the ring finger. So when you're getting married, obviously two people are coming together as one. Uh, you know, they're sharing, they're getting hitched. So the ring finger is the marriage finger. That's where the ulnar nerve and the median nerve are coming together. They're getting hitched and they're sharing one finger. So hopefully that helps you remember which finger it is that's being shared by the ulnar nerve and the median nerve. All right, so now that you know how to perform these tests, how do you remember them and then how you keep them separate in your mind? So the mnemonic I use is you're either praying or you're failing. So think of failing tests like failing a driver's test. So I think of it like this. You're either praying, so this mnemonic kind of gets your head around, okay, where are my hands at? They're kind of in a praying position. But if you're not praying, you're failing. So I think of failing as everything's pointed down, obviously. So fingers are pointing down for failing's test. If you're failing a driver's test, obviously your mood's going down, your score's going down, your emotion's going down, everything's pointing down. That's original failing's test. So what's reverse failing? What's reverse failing a test? Well, you're passing. Fingers are pointed up. Everything's going up, your score is going up, your mood's going up, emotions are going up. This is reverse phalanx test, and everything's pointing in an upwards direction. So think of reverse of failing is passing, which is good. Everything's going up. Failing, failing a test, everything's pointing down. So hopefully those tips give you a little idea of how to remember them and then how to keep them separate in your mind. If you need some good luck vibes, just leave a comment below. I'll always hit you back. Again, thanks for watching, and as always, good luck on your next test.